Good morning. Uh, it came to me last night that the reason people are confused on salvation is because they don't understand how somebody that could get saved just be lazy, do nothing for God, and then somebody go out and be a disciple and a servant, and they all still get to heaven. Okay, so I'm going to clarify this, okay? Uh, salvation is a free gift received by faith. God's mercy by faith alone. Every person saved the same exact way, regardless of how good they are, what they do. It is not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. So I'm clarifying this. There is a judgment seat of Christ, the Bema seat of Christ, a judgment for believers, okay? And we are told that they will suffer loss and there will be tears for not walking in the good works, okay? Not living the good life. So that's how that's rectified in your mind. It is not a salvation issue. It is a uh, how you will spend your eternity, not where, okay? Your sin and your works determine how you'll spend eternity, not where you'll spend eternity. Where you spend eternity is whether you believe the simple gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, that Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day. That is the clear gospel, the life, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, fulfilling scriptures for the remission of sins. That is the truth that saves you. I've said before, the demons believe. No, they believe there's one God. That's monotheism, okay? The truth that saves you is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, with that being said, I did a video on rightly dividing the word of God, what, dividing what Jesus and the apostles taught under the law to Israel from what the mystery of the cross that was revealed to Paul after, okay? So if you want to know how to be saved, look at John, look at all the epistles of Paul, and look at Acts. There you go. Because in Acts 15, they say, the Holy Ghost gave no such commandment for salvation, okay it's believing they suggested that they stay away from fornication and meat offered to idols and they shall do well but other than belief that's all they suggested okay it wasn't even mandatory so salvation is a done deal by grace through faith it's that simple it has nothing to do with how good you are how bad you are and if you can't get over it sorry grace isn't fair we all deserve hell all have fallen short of the glory of god there's not one righteous no not one the problem is these people think they deserve salvation they don't, okay? It's a free gift. That's it. Now, God has made a system up to reward the good servants, okay? And it is, here's a few verses on this. Uh, the second epistle of John 1.8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward, okay? We need to be eternally minded because those that are faithful will rule, will have leadership, positions in the kingdom with Jesus, okay? How you live this life, how you treat people, the good works you walk in, the sinful life you live determines your eternal destiny, okay? So this short life shouldn't be what you focus on. I do not condone living in sin. I do not condone not doing the good works. I am clarifying what the word says, and it has to be clear because you don't repent of your sins to be saved, okay? You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop saying, repent and believe. That was to the Pharisees that were in unbelief over Jesus Christ to repent of their accusations of him being demon-possessed. This has nothing to do with salvation. It was to Israel under the law. It is very clear. Do you think God would forget to mention repent in the book of John, which is clearly about salvation on how to get saved and, re and receive eternal life? Believe 85 times. Believe in faith 101. Repent zero because it has nothing to do with salvation. The mystery of the cross could not be revealed until after his death, okay? Because Satan would have never entered Judas and had him crucified. He had to fulfill scripture. There are shadows of it all through and i mentioned all the shadows of works versus grace okay in, in my rightly divide video now here's another one that explains rewards this is second corinthians uh 5 10 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ that's believers not the great white throne judgment that's unbelievers okay that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that which he has done, whether it be good or bad, okay? Can you rectify it now? Salvation's not a reward. This just determines how you're gonna spend eternity, not where, all right? So let's not mix it up with the confusion because an accursed false gospel saves no one. The Holy Spirit does not come unless you're trusting in Christ alone. If you're trusting in Christ plus repenting of your sins, it's part him, 
part you. Where these the lamb and me? No, it's all him, okay? Now, uh, I mentioned yesterday, Christ by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of majesty. Here is another one <coughs> about how if a person lives in sin, they will suffer loss, but they themselves will be saved. Okay, here we go. This is 1 Corinthians 3.13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall re receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Okay? I, I'm trying to clear it up. People don't seem to understand that salvation is not some reward for turning from your sins or being good or doing the good works, okay? They can't understand how that's possible. How could somebody still be an alcoholic and still get to heaven because it's a gift of God? That's it. There's no double talk here. You, you don't get, you know, you want to make him Lord of your life? You'll get rewards. Good for you, but you're not any more deserving of salvation, okay? I, I'm trying to get this clear to people, and they bring verses in that were to Israel under the law. I showed you in the last one the difference that in under the law, you're not forgiven by God until you forgive. Under here it says you were already forgiven, so how dare you not forgive? Do you see? There's a big difference. We have to rightly divide the word so we don't rest the scriptures to our own destruction. I'm so passionate about this because adding works to the crystal clear gospel cancels grace, meaning people are lost and they will hear the dreaded words in Matthew 7, depart from me, I never knew you. But didn't we repent of our sins? Didn't we do this? Didn't we make you Lord? Didn't we preach? Didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we do great mighty works? And he's gonna say, depart from me, why? Because they brought their works to him. Not, didn't you die for me? And said, if I trusted in your shed blood and didn't add my effort to it, you would save me? Yes, okay? I. I I'm so passionate about this. I, I'm heartbroken because I, you know, I see people like Ray Comfort go to saved people and tell them they're not saved because they're not living in hope, whatever that means, living in holiness, Ray Comfort. I, I'm disgusted by it. Then they tell lost people, they show them the law, which is fine, on how they fall short as a sinner, okay? If anybody's deceived enough to think they don't sin and they're good enough to get to heaven, well, okay, use the law, but most people don't need it. But in any case, let's just give them kudos for that. They show them the law, show them how they fall short. They're primed for the gospel. Does he give it to them? No. He tells them, turn from your sin and believe Jesus. Okay, that's not the gospel. It's not try really hard to stop sinning so Jesus forgives you. It's you're forgiven. Now go serve the one that saved you. And then the Holy Spirit comes and will guide us in daily righteousness. We are instructed not to grieve that spirit, not to quench that spirit, to walk in righteousness, to walk in the good works. We're saved to do good works. You will be chastised by God. You could even die early like Ananias and Sapphira if you don't. So I encourage every saved person to be a disciple. And I've said before, we got lazy, saved, confused people versus unsaved, self-righteous hypocrites. Okay, we need to come in the middle. All people saved by grace through faith, living for the Lord with an eternal mindset. That's what we need. And no, you don't lose salvation. You are eternally in his hands. No one snatches you out of his hands. Look at my video, Endure to the End. Is it God that keeps us or our own self-effort. That verse isn't even about salvation. It's about surviving during the tribulation. If they're still alive, Jesus will save them from physical death. It has nothing to do with salvation. This is the problem. I, I'm, I'm just frustrated. You know, I, I care. It's why I'm upset. I care. I want people saved. It's so easy to be saved. It really is glorious good news that Christ did it all and by himself purged our sins. And we receive that gift by simply through faith, believing. Now, faith is not faithfulness and obedience. Faith is simply being convinced or persuaded that something is true, okay? Because they always try to add that to it. Everybody wants their pride. See, my faith is real. I fell down and cried because I was so broken over what a sinner. See how much more real my faith is? It's, just, it's nonsense, okay? You don't have to fall apart and cry because you're a sinner. We sin because we're sinners, you know? We're not sinners because we sin. So if you know you fall short, all you do is rest in the shed blood of Jesus, know that he rose again as the first fruits of the resurrected, and you will too. Just trust in that. 
And yes, serve him. Turn from your sins. Do all that wonderful stuff. Because it determines how you spend your eternity, not where. Okay? Bye, guys.